So this is what it's like to be 40 years old. I get to go out to this beautiful river here and get rowed around by these young bucks, like Mr. Jason Harmson here. What's up guys? We got cameraman Alex in the back and we are after some bobber downs, but it's gonna be a bit of a challenge today just on the fact that the river is really high, it's really muddy. We're like practically the only boat out here. Got some twitching jigs. Got it all for you guys, but I wanna do a very special catch and cook at the end of the day for you guys. We get a lot of questions, a lot of comments, a lot of insight on like curing eggs and stuff, but I wanna prepare the salmon a meal today, but the only way we're gonna do that is if we find some fat chromy hen coho in here today. Now, are uh, we gonna do that? There's a few around. I think we are uh, got all the right tools for the trade. We'll, uh, I think we'll manage to hunt some up today. Well, we're gonna see if we can accomplish a mission and uh, we're gonna have a lot of fun today on the river too. So it's gonna be a good time and hopefully you guys are gonna see some big bright bobbers drain into the water. Look at that water, guys. It is super high and muddy. And, just, it's, and it's flying. It's we're going about 30 miles an hour right now down the river. Yeah, we're, we're just a little blue Ferrari down here. <laughs> but with that said, got them pretty white hoochies tied up today. Big, bright, white. Got my Akuma twitching rod. Well, you know, I can show some tricks because. Chances are, hopefully you guys are fishing a little better water than this, but <laughs> we're gonna find out. Usually there's a big rock there you gotta watch out for. <laughs> we, <laughs> you gotta, we go right over. We just kinda go right over the top of it. Usually it <laughs> sticks out of the water about four feet. And uh, yeah, definitely not a concern today. Right hey, there's here. a fish right there. Look, look, there you go. There goes fish right there. That's a big, that's a big one. Big old scab nose. Yeah. Big old scab nose. Big old dark chinook. Not the one we want. Here we go. In the sweet spot. Picking it up. Just felt the bottom. Let it just kind of sit in there, marinate, let it fall. Current's kind of pulling on it, so I'm not doing much reeling. So I just can kind of feel that jig getting down there working. Letting that hoochie do its thing. Sorry if I the boat on Man. Let me give it one more, just a little to the right. Just kind of work different angles. Letting it sink in there again. Oh, just felt the bottom. Just working it, keeping it low. It's muddy water, you know, so this jig's gonna have to stay down in their face if they're gonna wanna take a shot at it. They're gonna see it. You're not going to want to be lifting it way up high or reeling too much to keep it on the surface because it's not where those fish are going to be laying. I'm going to go one more, a little more to the right. There we go. Drop it in. Oh, we found one like twitching, boys! We found one twitching! No, he's good. Oh, it's a cromer. It's a cromer. Oh, no, no, we're not leaving. We're not leaving. We're not leaving this spot. I'm going to tow him up. We're either going to break him off He's all wrapped though. Come on, unwrap, unwrap. Oh, oh, yeah, there he goes. Yeah, come on, come on, unwrap. Nope. He's still fudgered. I'm gonna break him if he doesn't unwrap. There he is, got him. Oh, he unwrapped. He just unwrapped right there, guys. Just running around. He's skiing up river. I can see it right in his mouth. You get that net ready. <laughs> we don't want to give up the spot, guys, because it's a real good spot. Oh, stay with it, baby. We might have started right off. We didn't even get the bobbers out. We didn't even get the bobbers, we didn't even get the bobbers out. Oh. He's over here. He's over there. Nice cromer. He got his mouth open like a shark. We're trying to make him work. Hopefully he's a keeper, guys. Oh, I think he's a good one. I think he's a good one. <laughs> yes! You good? Woo. Yeah. I don't see a fin. All right. And you know what? Nice hen. We got you guys that catch and cook already. Look at that. Just freaking smoked oh. it. 
hooked up full of eggs. Look at that fish. What a beaut. Man, we fished the river the last couple days and the twitching wasn't really doing it. And we were, Jason was just getting us into this perfect spot, cutting a little bait. The freaking hoochie <laughs> prevails. Threw it out one more cast there. I was just gonna reach for the bobber rod, but like I said, we got you guys a little catch and cook now. There it is. Hatchery fish, fat. Oh. Yeah. That was so freaking cool. Yes. So there you go. Already got one, but I didn't even get a chance to like kind of show you guys like what I was like trying to do and why we're using these hoochies. You can see how dark and muddy the water is, but when you pop those hoochies and they fall, it gives you a real big presentation there. You can kind of see that. And so all I did is I just kind of cast it up against the wall and I let it sink about five or six seconds. I waited for it to feel and hit the bottom. Second hit the bottom, gave it about two twitches. And then obviously it picked it up on the fall because I, I don't know if you guys saw that with Alex, but like when I set the hook on that fish, I wasn't even sure it was a fish. She just grabbed it. And then when I lifted the rod, kind of feel her on there. And then I just kind of pulled through and then all of a sudden it came alive. So you can see in this muddy water, that freaking hoochie getting it done. Jason's teeing up the bait of goodness here. We want to see this happen. Broke out the pin today. Broke out the old Colville. Got a pin to win, huh? Got a pin it to win it, buddy. Oh, just like you had done that a for times. years. Oh, what is oh that? What is that doing? Oh it did something there. Something's happening. It wiggled for sure. Oh, the suspense. The suspense addicts. Come on. Come on. Come on. It was right down there. That was the scene of the crime with the twitching jig. I'm so sorry, I guys. I failed the first cast. I'm so sorry. We did not get. It's okay because the battery is like. <laughs> <laughs> so you're lucky. Don't go down. Go you're lucky. Go you're lucky. Down, lucky. Down, <laughs> Jason, being the good guide that he is, moving us down to where we just saw one roll, and that probably means they're pocketed up there. But I think it's time to bust out a little procure addicted blend egg on them. Oh, Freaking juicy. What's that? Oh, Jason's calling shots. <laughs> look at that. Mm. All right, guys, I know these baits look kind of juicy. I got a little bit of skein in there. I'm going to make sure I put that hook point through there a couple times just to make sure that that bait's going to stay on. I'll take that egg loop and wrap it around. I'll put a twist in it. What that twist is going to allow me to do is grab that bait twice. Cinch it up tight. Oh my gosh. Coho's dead right now. Bold move, Cotton. We're going to make a bold move right here. This slick looks too good to not fish. I'll lay it in there. And drop my rod tip down. Use the line on the water to draw it out. Mend it tight in the seam. Perfect and the seam. Oh, baby. So pretty. Keep my line tight, tip up, nice line off the wire, natural drift, as good as it gets. Minus a fish. Jason and I have put about a hundred baits through there looking for these bobber downs that we're supposed to get. And I absolutely am ticked off because you catch a fish right out of the gate and you think, oh man, we're gonna get them. Call that the bingo fish and it's a bad fish to catch because when you do, it seems like this is what happens. We've been at it for about two, three hours. I don't know if the fish are just cooled off and aren't moving through, but we're not seeing any roll and we're not getting any action on any of the other gear, any of the twitching jig stuff either anymore. So I'm just gonna keep kind of poking away here. Water's high, fish should be moving through. I'm just gonna keep grinding. Oh, 
I saw see that. Still grinding, but we just rode further and further and further to a good secret spot here. Are you gonna show these guys what's up? Are We're, you gonna do a little better job besides just stinging them so they don't bite again? Oh God. Don't, don't Tell me put, what's going on today. Tell me, me how you feel. Tell me how uh, you feel right now. How I feel? I feel like I really, this is the spot for redemption. I, I let you guys down. And that last little clip of that bobber down, that thing, that was a gimme. That was a gimme. And uh, what do you have to say for yourself? Just, are you, will you apologize to the viewers? I'm sorry. <laughs> but I'm going to show you guys what a good bobber down looks like after I get this tangle untangled. Well, that would have been a good bobber down for about five seconds before the oh. line broke. <laughs> oh! Did you hurry the heck hey, up? I got it out, all right. All right. Let's get a cast here. I'm gonna let Jason take the honors oh, and get God. the first cast in here. Thank you. Guide Jason, here it comes. He's definitely in the right, he definitely chose the right line, everybody. He's got a good drift. Little, oh, kind of sucked a little of the inside, Barber races, left side. Come on, baby. If it's gonna get eaten, it's gonna get eaten right in there. Come on. Well, we just rode all the way down river for nothing. What do you have to say for yourself now? I am not a first caster, I guess. <laughs> I just... <laughs> Oh, he oh, broke no off! Way. Oh. Both of us suck so bad, That was a nice fish. Even. Well, here I am retying again. You guys have seen me do this before today. All that. Kind of moving between holes, just threw over to the, some side pocket water. Twitched it by the boat, saw the fish like come up, but I didn't think he had it. Dropped it back down to him. Immediately felt him grab it and then jump barreling out of the water and I thought I had him kind of under control. He took a little bit out into the current and freaking tink, my line let go. So for all you guys out there that struggle and have a hard time sometimes with salmon and steelhead, well, you're not alone. And maybe if anything, this episode is going to show that. Because <laughs> uh, we are fishing a ton of water, fishing a ton of good bait, ton of good gear. And we still cannot seem to put too many more together for you. But stay with us, guys. You know we have a way of pulling it out in the end. I, I don't know what to say. A loss for words. Attack. I think that's the one I just broke off. <laughs> A pretty one. You coho jack? You gonna let him go? We'll keep him. Good dinner, fish. That is a beautiful little coho jack. That was a bobber down. And that was a bobber down. That was both bobber down and a fish. <laughs> I'll, I'll count it. I will count it any day of the week. And... <laughs> well, we made it to the end and we took a couple more chances. Did not prevail. Sometimes fish aren't cooperating and you can only do so much to yeah. get them to cooperate and they just didn't. So. This way she goes. <laughs> but I tell you what, we both fished this river yesterday, and the reason why we came back here for you guys is because we did have, we both had uh, quite a bit of the success, so. Of course. Well, yeah, I was gonna say, but I can tell you what, we definitely fished a lot harder today <laughs> than we did, uh, we did uh, yesterday, that's for sure. But good news is, is I still have a nice hen coho, and we coined the phrase, instead of catch and cook, we coined it catch and cure. 
So Mr. Han or Miss Han, go and throw her in there. Put that little bonus jack too. Where he oh, went? Yeah. He's hiding over there. And now we're gonna head back to my place, and we're gonna go through a process. And I'm gonna give you guys a real simple three-two-one cure today on uh, prepping these eggs and stuff, and give you guys a little more of an episode and something maybe to take home with you for the next time you guys go out to the river. So, Jason, Steel Obsession Guide Service. Thanks again, dude. Yes, sir. Good ride. Hopefully we'll Good do ride. it again soon. Yes, sir. And uh, have a little better outcome. <laughs> <laughs> well, we've had worse days, right? That's for sure. All right, see you back at my place. All right, guys, welcome to my bait lab. You know, just got off the river, long day, but the last thing you want to do after a long day of getting your butts kicked by fish is to not cure your eggs because from the moment that you take them out of the fish, the eggs are starting to rot. So we kept them cold, we bled the fish out, and here we are. And as you can see, it's definitely the end of the season because does your bait lab look like this too? Yeah. Yeah, it's a disaster in here, but you know what? <laughs> That's what off season's for. So I've got the skeins that I took out of that fish right here. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna just butterfly them open with a pair of scissors. And we're gonna open up the middles of that just so you guys can get that good cure and that preservative in there. Open it up. I like to just kind of cut it into chunks. That will help for mixing later. The other one right here. Mmm, that look good, Jason? Yeah. I'm gonna lay those out, and now I'm gonna prep and make the cure. So a three-two-one formula for curing eggs involves three part borax, two parts sugar, and one part salt. And what I really like to do is start with this Procure Borax Egg and Bait Cure. It's real fine. Um, it's been ground out. It doesn't. It's not clumpy. It cures the eggs really well. Um, it's super simple to use, and they have it dyed with certain pigments. You can get orange, or I got some pink stuff here. You can see I use it a lot, so for those who are really wondering. And I'm gonna do um, three parts. I'm gonna do a cup and a half of borax just to get me started here in my mason jar. Now, I don't like to make a lot of this at once because if I make a lot of it, oof, whew, yeah. if I make a lot of it, what happens is, is the salts and the sugar and the borax, like, kind of gets Stick humidity together. and then they turn into a rock. So you don't want to go making just giant batches of this stuff. So I just kind of make it as needed. I got some just white sugar here. I did a cup and a half of borax. I'm going to do a cup of white sugar. I'm making a mess, but I'm doing this fast for you guys. And then I'm going to do a half a cup of just non iodized salt. Boom. Boom, three, two, one. We're gonna mix it all up. Make sure that I got a good even amount. Now, I'm gonna take this three, two, one blend. And I'm not gonna go super heavy. You don't need as much of this as, you, as um, sometimes you see, but I'm just gonna do a nice little coating there. And you guys can see that. There, and I just like to gently fold, stir it up, because we're gonna wanna make sure that we get all those eggs coated, because if you don't, man, you go and you pull that jar out a couple days later or after you freeze it, and the eggs will have raw spots in them that have basically rotted and turned kind of gross, and they're not gonna fish very well. Like I said, I'm not trying to beat up the eggs, I'm just trying to make sure that I get all the spots and just a little bit of cure on every single one. Every little flat in there. Every little flat. Maybe one more slight dusting. That's it, man. That's what the, some of the eggs I was using today, that's all we were using. And makes it real simple. Then when it's done, you guys can add all the scent, cure, you can add some prickly krill, some of your oils, but do all that before you go fishing. So after just a little bit, the eggs will start to juice up and you can see within an hour, you'll start to see that color kind of take to the eggs and uh, they'll start looking good. And then hopefully you guys will go out there and do a lot better than we did. I mean, it's not always a super smash day out there, but we try to work hard for you guys and we really like to put the effort in. We put in a little long day for you guys to see that. And hopefully, if anything, you guys will take what we learned here today with this 3-2-1 cure and you'll go out there and 
catch some fish and share it with everybody else. So, and as always guys, we really appreciate you guys tuning in. And if you really liked what you saw and you wanna see more of it, check out this video in this upper right corner. It's on our addicted channel. We have almost 700 videos for you guys to enjoy. Also be sure to like and subscribe so when we put out these new contents and hopefully the next time it's a better smash fest, but you'll be able to check it out there and you'll get notified too if you turn that little bell on. And guess what? We'll leave you with the comment of the day. Have a good one.